Tonight, breaking news as we come on the air. The vice president just revealing moments ago test results from the cruise ship off California. At least 21 infected, 19 are crew members. Thousands of Americans on that cruise ship. They had been waiting for test results for hours. Helicopters hovering, dropping in test kits. And tonight, the next question, what is the plan now to treat them and to keep others safe? And in San Francisco tonight, the images of tents outside one hospital. Also breaking as we come on tonight, dozens at a Boston hotel have now been taken to the hospital for immediate screenings after attending a conference where at least three people have tested positive. In the New York City area tonight, the number of cases doubling again. Many of them linked to that one lawyer who took the train into Grand Central. His family testing positive, a neighbor positive, and tonight one of the first doctors who came in contact with him now positive. And now thousands in the New York area are being told to self-quarantine. The governor saying just today, it's like the flu on steroids. In Washington state tonight, the death toll rising. Authorities saying today they are losing patients. Grateful, the quote, cavalry is arriving. More patients taken from that nursing home. And tonight we hear from someone who lives there, the scene inside. Moments ago, the president at the CDC after his trip was abruptly canceled today. The president then going, saying the reason he didn't go at first, fears someone at the CDC might be infected. And Dr. Jen Ashton is standing by with your questions tonight about travel. Is it safe? About new guidance for anyone 60 and older, suggested changes to help protect you, and the simple steps you can take right now to boost your health. Team coverage on this fast-moving story, World News Tonight, begins now. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Friday night. And we know there has been a lot of news this week, particularly on coronavirus. And we're going to take you through it tonight, what you need to know as we finish out another week together. Just moments ago, Vice President Mike Pence saying the test results have now come in from the cruise ship off California. At least 21 testing positive, 19 are crew members, as the death toll and the number of cases in the U.S. grows tonight. With those new test results, the first to come in, we know there are thousands of Americans, cruise ship passengers on board that ship. So tonight, the obvious questions, what is the plan to treat those infected and to keep others safe? At a San Francisco hospital, images tonight, the tent now put up outside to handle cases. Here in New York City tonight, at least 4,000 people are now in self-quarantine. Many of them linked to that lawyer who took the train in from Westchester County to Grand Central. He is hospitalized in critical condition and now one of the first doctors to treat him, testing positive. There is also a developing scene in Boston tonight. Dozens of people taken from a hotel right to the hospital for screening after several conference participants tested positive. And take a look at this map tonight. It puts this spread in perspective, how quickly this is moving. It was one week ago last Friday night here. We reported a confirmed nine cases in nine states. Tonight, there are at least 267 cases in 24 states, nearly half the country now, six states added since just yesterday. We are going to carefully move through this tonight. Dr. Jen Ashton is here answering your questions, but we begin with ABC's chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, with news coming in on that cruise ship, those tests coming back positive, at least 21 on that ship. Tonight, nearly 24 hours after those choppers delivered those coronavirus test kits, the results revealing 21 aboard the Grand Princess cruise ship off the California coast have tested positive for coronavirus. 19 are crew members. It was news the passengers had feared all day. Right now, it's just numbing. It's just trying to process this information and see what our life holds in the next couple of weeks. Debbie Loftus and her parents among the 2,400 passengers circling about 60 miles off the coast of San Francisco, now confined to their rooms. I, I was worried mainly because my parents are elderly. I'm traveling with them. They're from Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, and my mom has asthma. So, yeah, I'm very worried if she would get ill, what might happen. Tonight, we're learning there are nine cases of the virus now linked to the ship's previous voyage, including that 71-year-old passenger who died after exhibiting symptoms before getting off the ship two weeks ago. This ship haunted by that recent nightmare for passengers of the Diamond Princess off Japan, where thousands were quarantined for weeks, but nearly one in five people on board wound up infected. Today, outside this San Francisco hospital, they were setting up tents to handle any overflow coronavirus patients. In Seattle, another crisis. 
Officials there are announcing that a team of 30 federal health professionals are on the way to help out at this nursing home where at least eight residents have died. We are grateful that the cavalry is arriving. We've had some challenges with life care and I'm starting to lose my patients. In just the last day, 15 patients have been rushed from the home to the hospital. And tonight we are hearing for the first time from a resident inside. Susan Haley has a cough and is waiting for test results. Do I want to leave? Yes, absolutely yes. It's not that the people aren't nice, it's that I don't like being trapped. For days, families have been begging for information on their loved ones. Our Kaylee Hartung sat down with Pat Herrick after she learned her mother died. Then she got a second painful call. She said, I just want to check in with you and let you know that your mother's doing fine, that she doesn't have a temperature. I said, that's My mom died at 3.30 this morning. And she was, oh, oh my God, you know, that wasn't in the chart. Just an awful story. Let's get to Matt Gutman. He joins us from California tonight, from San Francisco. And Matt, uh, back to the breaking news on the cruise ship. Those test results coming back positive, 21 of them, at least for now. And obviously the question is, how are you going to be able to get immediate help to the patients who tested positive while also uh, protecting those 2,400 passengers? I just got off the phone, David, with federal officials. They say they are working on those plans right now. Now, now, here's what we do know. The 1,100 crew members aboard that ship, they're going to stay on that ship for testing and possible quarantine. The 2,400 passengers, they are going to be disembarked at some point in the near future at a non-commercial port. They'll be tested and then maybe quarantined at one or more military bases. They are very concerned right now. David. All right, Matt Gutman leading us off tonight. Matt, thank you. Meanwhile, in the New York City area, the number of cases doubling again in the last 24 hours and the steps being taken in the city right now. Meantime, in Boston at this hour, the scene unfolding there, several people at a hotel taken to the hospital for immediate screenings. Here's ABC's Whit Johnson. Tonight, authorities shutting down a street in Boston, transporting dozens of people from the Marriott Hotel directly to the hospital to be tested for the new coronavirus. We now have new information that there have been three confirmed cases of coronavirus of Boston residents uh, tracking back to, tracing back to the same Biogen meeting. Uh, this is a rapidly evolving situation. Health officials testing people outside the hospital, then sending them home to wait for results. This, as states across the country, are scrambling to contain the spread. In New York, about 4,000 people, more than half in the New York City area alone, now under quarantine. This is like a flu on steroids. The number of new cases doubling again today, jumping to 44, including a doctor who works at the same hospital where the sick Westchester lawyer was initially taken. That attorney frequently traveled by train to Grand Central Terminal. Tonight, his rabbi telling his congregation, I have the virus and am doing reasonably well. But caution those who've had contact with him to seek counsel from your health practitioner. He demonstrated confidence in his own condition, um, and he reminded uh, his congregants that we all have a responsibility to do what we can to safeguard public health. The normally bustling business district of New Rochelle, a virtual ghost town. It's eerily quiet. There's not many cars. There are not many shoppers. Bob Kent lives just down the street from the lawyer at the center of the outbreak. Do you get the sense that people are anxious about what will happen next? Yes, I think people have pretty well decided that it's, in a sense, unstoppable. I don't see any way that it doesn't continue to expand. ABC News getting exclusive access to New York's Wadsworth Center in Albany, the first state lab in the country to begin testing for coronavirus with its own developed test. There's no reason for panic here. There's no reason for undue anxiety. Facts do not back that up. Tonight, nationwide, many schools and universities canceling classes or holding lessons online. New York City schools preparing plans for remote learning capabilities. The University of Washington also teaching classes online after a faculty member tested positive. And pharmaceutical companies are bracing for shortages too. 80% of drugs consumed in the U.S. come from China and India, so more delays threaten supplies of critical medication. Late tonight, the city of Austin, Texas, canceling the wildly popular South by Southwest Festival, a $355 million blow to the local economy. More than 400,000 people attend the event each year.
With Johnson on the ripple effect across this country tonight, and just moments ago, President Trump went to the CDC in Atlanta after his trip was abruptly canceled for a time today. The president said the reason he did not go at first, fears that someone at the CDC might be infected. Later, he went amid questions tonight about the response, about whether there are enough test kits in this country. Here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. Tonight, President Trump visited the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta and insisted the federal government has the coronavirus outbreak under control. The head of the CDC seemed to agree. At the present time, the general risk to the American public remains low. The president also said coronavirus tests are available to everybody who needs them. Anybody that needs a test gets a test. We, they're there. They have the tests. And the tests are beautiful. That is not clear, as Anthony Fauci of the National Institutes of Health said last night. Up to this point, there has been a lag in the ability to get tested. Vice President Pence went to Washington State last night, praising the efforts of Democratic Governor Jay Inslee in the state hit hardest so far. I do want to commend uh, Governor Inslee, uh, your team's effort, and the seamless partnership that was forged from the very beginning. Today, the president offered an entirely different message. So I told Mike not to be complimentary of the governor because that governor is a snake. And the governor of Washington, that's where you have many of your problems, okay? So Mike may be happy with him, but I'm not. The president's trip to the CDC almost didn't happen today after concerns there may have been employees there exposed to the virus. Mr. President, why aren't you going to CDC today? Well, he's actually set me. Uh, you I'm going to go down. You could tell that. Yeah. We may, we may go. There was, uh, they thought there was a problem uh, at CDC with somebody that had the virus. Uh, it turned out negative, so we're seeing what we can do. John Carl live at the White House tonight. And John, President Trump at the CDC declaring that anyone who needs a test kit or a test in particular, that they can get a test. But there is some question about that. In fact, Vice President Mike Pence, I know, who has been put in charge by the administration of the coronavirus response, was asked about this just moments ago. How, how did he clarify that? Because he said 24 hours ago there weren't enough test kits in this country. Uh, Vice President Pence said that the president is exactly right, David, that, quote, for the communities that have been impacted, we have been able to respond to requests for tests. Less clear as whether or not they will have enough going forward. But Pence also said that they've already distributed some 900,000 uh, test kits this week and plan to do another 4 million by next week. David. All right, John Carl with us on a very important Friday night. John, thank you. Tonight, the World Health Organization reporting the number of coronavirus infections is now on the verge of 100,000. Deaths now surpassing 3,300. And this number today, 49 more deaths in Italy just today. Nursing homes there are being shut down. The director of the World Health Organization is warning, quote, this is not a drill, calling for significant action to stop the spread. ABC's James Longman from London tonight. The viral wave from China now seems to be cresting as it surges west. Italy, Iran and Britain all recording their single biggest daily jumps in coronavirus cases. With 100,000 infections globally now, the chief of the World Health Organization is calling on all nations to make containment the highest priority. This is a time for pulling out all the stops. Italy, where 49 people died in a day, is restricting access to nursing homes. The risk is particularly great for Western Europe's large elderly populations. And the Vatican reporting its first case, a medical clinic there shut down for sterilization. One major European airline slashing its flights in half from pre-outbreak levels. And as people look to avoid crowds, tourist spots around the world are unusually quiet. And David, tonight a glimpse of hope from Asia. China is reporting a slowdown in the virus. That's because of an unprecedented crackdown. But these are harsh methods unlikely to be reproduced by Western countries. David. All right, James Longman with the scene around the world. James, thank you. And of course, we know all of you at home continue to have a lot of questions about this. So we want to get right back to Dr. Jen Ashton, our chief medical editor. And Jen, you heard what James reported there out of China, somewhat reassuring that the case numbers are coming down dramatically, but they took drastic steps. Yeah. We're likely not to do that here in the U.S., but right. we've heard a lot about this uh, social distancing, and we're starting to hear about that here in the U.S. Uh, action tonight, we're learning, in New York City when it comes to schools. Exactly. So we're talking about things, David, like school closings or canceling large gatherings, uh, working from home if possible, though clearly not everyone can do that and not everyone can do school from home. But it is effective, potentially, in really slowing the spread of this virus, otherwise known as flattening that curve.
We just want to keep everybody healthy. That's the bottom line here. And, and I heard one of the headlines, the updates today, and it was somewhat concerning uh, for me. It, it said, what do you, the recommendation that people 60 and older might start to think about some of their behavioral patterns, things that they have planned in the coming days and, and weeks. And 60 seems so young to yeah. be uh, changing behavior, but you, you say this could be important. Well, 60 is young, um, but it refers to the more, more vulnerable population here, which we know skews older. So people 70s, 80s with chronic or pre-existing medical conditions. And I think it also introduces...